In this video, I will talk about the memory consistency model. And while this is a fairly complex topic, I will focus on issues which are relevant to programmers. In particular, I will focus on issues which are relevant when programming concurrent applications. So why is the memory consistency model of a processor important for software developers? Let's look at a very simple example. Assume we have two memory addresses, A and B, initially both zero. And say we have two threads, T1 and T2, concurrently operating on these memory addresses. T1 first stores the value 1 at address A, and then loads uh, address B in a, in a local register, while thread T2 first stores 1 at address B, and then loads address A again in a local register. Now, we ask the question, what is the content of the local registers R1 and R2 after the execution of these instructions? Well, if thread1 executes its instructions before thread2 can execute its instructions, um, the contents should be 0 in R1 and 1 in R2. Similarly, if thread2 executes its instructions before thread1 executes its instructions, the contents should be 1 in R1 and 0 in R2. If thread1 executes its store, then thread2 executes its store, and then the two loads are executed in whichever order, the contents should be R1 equals 1 and R2 equals 1 as well. We notice that if the instructions of each thread are executed in this order specified in the program, there is no way in which uh, both R1 and R2 can have the value 0 at the end of the execution. Still, in practice, it is possible that this might happen. We might have an execution which results in both R1 and R2 containing 0. This is a result of what we call the memory consistency model of a processor, and this can render an algorithm, a concurrent algorithm, that is theoretically correct, incorrect in practice. To better understand why these reorderings are possible, we need to look at the memory consistency model. The memory consistency model basically describes the instruction ordering across addresses that the processor may do. It is important to note that the memory consistency model uh, concerns instructions dealing with different addresses. Instructions dealing with the same address, the behavior of the memory system in that case, is covered by the cache coherence protocol. The memory consistency model deals with accesses to different addresses. An important point to be made here is the fact that whatever optimizations the processor will do, it will do with disregard to concurrency. The processor is not aware if your application is single-threaded or multi-threaded. The processor will try to optimize your program while only trying to ensure single-threaded correctness. So let's first look at an ideal memory consistency model from the point of view of a programmer. And when I say ideal from the point of view of a programmer, it means the most convenient, the easiest one to use. That memory consistency model is called sequential consistency. In essence, what that means is that all instructions are executed atomically and there are no reorderings between uh, memory instructions. Of course, the benefit of this memory model is its simplicity. The downside, however, is the fact that its performance is not the best it could be. There are various uh, opportunities for optimization which uh, this memory consistency model does not take advantage of. Let's look at a simple example. Say we have a program consisting of four instructions, a store to an address A, followed by three loads of addresses B, C, and D. Assume that the content of address A is stored in a modified state in some remote cache. Sequential consistency says that the subsequent loads of B, C, and D need to wait until the store to A is completed before they can be executed. However, address A is not reused in this program. It is never stored or loaded again. Therefore, from the point of view of the semantics of, these, of this thread, the loads could progress before the store to address A is completed. And, as I said, the semantics of the program would remain the same. Of course, if our program is a multi-threaded one, this optimization of performing the loads before the store to A is completed may lead to the effects we saw uh, in the first example of this video. Because, in practical terms, performance is of the essence, uh, this memory consistency model, sequential consistency, is never used in practice. I will now describe the memory consistency model which is most common in x86 processors and in Spark processors, with small variation, but the principle is the same in all of these processors. Uh, this memory consistency model is called Total Store Order, or TSO for short. To better understand this memory consistency model, let us look at a very simple example. Assume we have the following snippet of code. 
So the rules of the total store order memory model are simple. First, this memory model says that writes are not reordered with respect to other writes. In our example, that means that the store to B cannot be executed before the store to A. The second rule says that loads are not reordered with respect to other loads. In our example, that means that the load to B will not be executed before the load to A finishes. The third rule says that writes are not reordered with respect to reads. In our example, that means that the store to C, for instance, will not be executed before the load of B completes. Finally, the TSO memory model does allow reorderings between reads and writes. Reads may be reordered with respect to writes to different memory addresses. What this means is that if we have a store taking very long, a subsequent read can progress provided that it does not access the same memory address as the store. In our example, that means that the load to B can be executed before the store to C finishes. Again, it is important to note that this only concerns instructions that deal with different memory addresses. What this basically translates to is the effects we saw in the first example of this video. This can allow for better performance, but it can cause issues when dealing with concurrency. So far, I only discussed the TSO memory model, which is specific to x86 processors or Spark processors with small variations. However, other processors have different memory consistency models. In particular, many commonly used processors have relaxed memory consistency models. Examples of processors having more relaxed memory consistency models include ARM or Tellara processors. These processors allow even more reorderings than the TSO memory consistency model we have just seen. It is therefore important for the developers to document themselves and understand the memory model of the underlying processor before developing concurrent applications on a particular processor. In addition, it is important to note that virtualized environments have their own memory consistency models, which are independent of the underlying processor. An example of such an environment is the Java Virtual Machine. So, now that we know what the memory consistency model is, how do we go about ensuring the correctness of our programs? Let's go back to the first example in this video. Let's say that we want to make sure that at the end of this execution of thread 1 and thread 2, we don't end up with 0 in both register 1 and in register 2. The reordering of the store and the load can be ensured by using what is called a memory fence. These memory fences, or memory barriers, as they are also referred to, come in different flavors. We have store fences, which ensure that instructions after the fence are only executed once all the stores before the fence have been executed. Next, we have load fences, which ensure that instructions after the load fence are, are executed only once all the loads before the fence have finished. And finally, we have full fences, which ensure that instructions after the full fence are executed only once all the loads and stores before it have been executed. However, these fences or memory barriers should be used only when it is truly necessary, given that they prevent reorderings and thus have a negative impact on the overall performance. The memory consistency model is not the only possible source for reorderings. Another source for reorderings is the compiler, which also tries to optimize your code and is also not aware of multiple threads or multiple processes operating on the same data. However, compiler optimizations will be discussed in another video. To conclude, we have discussed the memory consistency model and we have focused on issues which are relevant to programmers, in particular developers of concurrent applications.